Hey y'all, I got good news for you. And the good news is God is fighting for you. He's fighting for all of us. God wanted me to get on here and tell you that because some of y'all done rolled up your sleeves and got your Vaseline and you ready to take this thing in your own hand. Why? Because the enemy has been persistent in being a thorn in your side in some kind of shape, form, or fashion in the arena of your life. He has been refusing to flee. He's been refusing to flee. He just think, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to be a headache to you. I'm going to keep torturing you. I'm going to keep being a terror in your life. I'm going to keep doing this and that and the other. Well, I'm here to tell you that God said he is fighting for you. And when God said he's fighting for you, that just means he has already won. Because God ain't doing nothing. Why? Because he's already done it. Okay? The enemy is about to finally catch up to the end of the fight. And that is that he is defeated. And you're about to catch up to the end of the fight, which means what? That you have the victory. So roll your sleeves back down. Take that Vaseline off your face. And remember what God said, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what principalities, exactly. God said the battle ain't yours, it's his. No matter how great the multitude is, he said it ain't yours. So don't be afraid, don't be dismayed. Don't try to figure it out. God said don't try to get in your extra head. You know how it is when somebody fighting, and they winning, but you saying, shoot, I'm going to get an extra lick. God said, he don't need your extra lick. He don't need you to put in a kick. He don't need you to put in an uppercut. He don't need you to pull out the weave. He don't, he don't need you to do that. He got this. And the reason why God don't want you to put your hands in it is because when he come through for you, when you receive this victory and the enemy receives defeat, God said, you will be found blameless. No one will be able to tie you to what has happened to the enemy. Nobody will be able to tie your name to it, tie your family to it. They won't. Why? Because you didn't put your hands in it. Y'all, while I was in prayer today, I heard the Holy Spirit remind me of what God's word said. And the Holy Spirit said this, I will come in like a thief in the night. I said, okay, God. So while, while in right in prayer, I go and get my word. And I say, okay. And I find it. And as I begin to read, in 1st Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, I think it's 1st Thessalonians. Y'all know how I'm from Georgia, so I cut off endings of words and stuff. But from 1st Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, it reads like this. And I, God, will come in like a thief in the night. And when they have said, I am safe and at peace, who are they? They is the enemy. It's the wicked ones who have allowed the enemy to influence their vessel to work evil against you, to be a thorn in your side. So God said when they say that they are at peace and safe, in other words, they say, I can rest in this wickedness. I'm sleeping good at night that I'm being a thorn in your side. When some of them are saying, I got away with it, God said just when they said I'm safe and I'm at peace, God says this, then destruction shall come upon them and it shall be like a woman in travail with child and there shall be no escape. God said then destruction shall come upon them. Now I know that sounds crazy because God says this warning comes before destruction, right? Warning comes before destruction. So if God is saying that then sudden destruction, that means God said, I gave you a chance. I showed you in a dream what will happen to you if you don't quit this wickedness against my people. I even spoke to you through a stranger and told you what you was working with and what you was doing was evil and you should turn from your wicked ways. But you did not listen. Sound like a Pharaoh situation, remember? Pharaoh got warning after warning after warning. He got locusts, right? His crops was 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 was, was, was going away, right? All of that. God allowed so many plagues. Those plagues was war, they were warnings to say, let my people go. Release them from the bondage. Take the thorn out of their side. But oh Pharaoh in his pride, he continued to lie 
to cheat and thinking that I'm resting. What I'm doing ain't wrong. Remember the Bible says that the enemy calls good evil and evil good. That's the mindset of Pharaoh. That's the mindset of a Pharaoh. They think that what they're doing is a good thing and they justify it by lies. But God say warning comes before destruction and after you receive all the warnings, remember Pharaoh? By the last plague with his son dying? Yeah. Then Pharaoh finally said, okay, Moses, take care of everybody. Everybody, take us, get out of here quick. But then even after that, Pharaoh still wouldn't let it go. He still didn't know how to take defeat. He still didn't know how to recognize the God of children of Israel. <laughs> and so God said, I'm going to have to swallow you. That's what God said. I'm going to have to swallow you up. You remember his word said that I will swallow death with my victory. That's what God said. Isn't that what happened to Pharaoh? So in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, God said when the enemy, when the wicked ones, when they have said, I am safe, that nobody see me in my darkness, I'm hidden. God said, darkness unto him is still as of light. Which means what? You can't hide from God. No, you can't hide from God, devil. You can't. God know your address. God know what car you drive. God know where you really work. God know what you're doing at night. God see all. He said his eyes are in every place beholding all the good and the evil. His eyes go to and fro throughout the world. And he's showing up strong on the behalf of those that love him. Which means what? God said, I've given you plenty of warning. Warnings, you didn't take heed. I allow this to happen to you. I allow strangers to come to you and, and, and tell you that you're in sin. Leave these people alone. Leave that man's wife alone. Leave that woman's husband alone. You just wouldn't let well enough alone. You just didn't know how to let go. So God says, sudden destruction. And then at the end, he said, there will be no escape. Can I tell you what sudden means? Sudden means no warning. That's what God said. He's going to come in like a thief in the night. Which means what? You ain't going to see this thing coming, devil. The devil ain't going to see it coming. That, y'all listen to me. That that has been a thorn in your side. Those individuals, the wicked ones who just refuse. They are just so rebellious. They, they refuse to leave you alone. They refuse to take your name out of their mouth. They refuse to leave your wife alone. They refuse to leave your husband alone. They refuse to leave your children alone. They refuse to leave you alone. The enemy has refused to get his hand off of your finances. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because the thing behind this is sin. It's wickedness. It's evil. It's the kingdom of darkness. And God said, because the enemy has refused to flee, he said, now destruction. And this destruction is not coming with a warning because you've already gotten your warnings, okay? So God said this, this is gonna, it's gonna hit you like a bag of bricks. It's gonna come from the sidelines. It's gonna catch you off guard. And God says this, he said, there will be no escape, which means what? When this destruction hits, ain't no help gonna be available for you. I, when, when God started telling me this, y'all, I was like, whoo! I said, oh my God. I was like, well, Lord, 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 please have mercy on them. And God said, ah, no, 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 no. God said, you can keep praying for them. He said, but you don't ever feel sad about what's going to happen to the enemy, to the devil. Because remember, it's not the brother or the sister. It's the wickedness, the, the spirit of wickedness of king of the, from the kingdom of darkness that's working within them. So God said, don't feel sad. Because see, sometimes we like to attach, <laughs> attach our emotions to the individuals that's being used. God said, sever that. That's what God said. He is sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide the soul and the spirit. So you got to stop looking at that individual as who they are. And look at them, nothing but the enemy. And God is saying there will be no escape. And it's going to happen suddenly, immediately, 
quickly, swiftly. They ain't going to see it coming. It's going to come out of left field. They're going to be just walking. They're going to come out of left field and knock them out. And there will be no recovery. It won't. God said, there will be no escape. Go and read it. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. And as you continue to read, you'll see what God said, that he didn't want your hands in it. Don't be, don't be, he said he didn't want your hands in it because he want to find you um, blameless. Oh, you hear me? He wants you to be found blameless. Which means when the when God gets the enemy, when he calls for that sudden destruction to come upon them, you, your family, anything that's tied to you will not be tied to them. Which means nobody will look at you or anybody in your family as if you all had anything to do with it. Why? Because you are blameless. Because you decided to roll your sleeves down and not take it upon your own hands. Okay, you, you hear me? That's what God said. Put, put the sleeves back down. Take that Vaseline off. You ain't fighting nobody. You ain't finna go back and forth with nobody. You ain't about to do that. That's what God said. You ain't about to do it. He said, don't be weary in the well-doing. I know you want to give them a piece of your mind. I know you want to fight back. I know you want to tell them what the truth is. But God said, shut up. He got this. He got this. So when it's over, when it is over, when you see the reward of the wicked with your own eyes as God promised you in Psalms 91, God said, then you'll understand why you had to keep your hands out of it. Because certain people who are being used by the enemy just won't get it together. The enemy don't care who he uses. And if those individuals are so in a space to where they are allowing their flesh to lead them instead of the spirit of God, then you cannot have pity. You can only pray for them. That's what God said. Pray for them. Bless them. Be good to them. But God says sudden destruction. He's going to come in like a thief in the night while they're feeling safe underneath their covers, right? While they're at peace. God said he's going to come in like a thief in the night. Then sudden destruction shall come upon them and it shall be like a woman in travail with child. Now men... Y'all not able to understand how childbirth works when you in that labor phase. You have no idea, but I can tell you this. I will take a, 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 a toothache. I, 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 I will take, listen, there's no, uh, there's no explanation of the type of pain that a woman is in when she is in travail, when she is in labor. Some people just say, kill me. That's what some people say. Some, some ladies say when they're in labor, oh, can I just die? Medicate me, put me out, knock me out. Why? Because it's coming out. And God said there will be no escape. And that's the thing. When it comes in sudden, I told you without warning, the enemy won't have time to gather up anything. He won't have time to say, oh, a flood is, yeah, is, is coming. I see the waters, it's about to flood. He ain't going to have time to grab a suitcase and pack up the valuables. <laughs> He's not going to have time to get anything. Everything will be destroyed. Wiped out. Everything that brought them peace and safety. Everything that they use as stability will be wiped out. I'm telling you, God ain't leaving nothing for the devil. He's not. Why? Because God said, don't despise. Listen carefully. God said, do not despise a thief. Because that's, that's who they are. The enemy is a thief. God said, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And when it has come to you and when it has come to me, whatever it may be, the enemy has come in and he has stolen. He has killed. He has destroyed. So he thinks. But God said, don't despise a thief when he steals to satisfy his own soul. God said, but when you, when you find that thief, when you come to the awareness of God opening your eyes to say that devil and stole your wife, that devil and stole your husband. Cause see, it ain't the, it ain't, it, it, it ain't, it ain't the man. It ain't the people. You have to understand this. It's never the people. 
It's the principalities. It's sin. It's wickedness. It's from the kingdom of darkness. That's why God said, sometimes y'all get rid of stuff that's, that's yours. Because you're looking at it in a physical standpoint. God said, this thing is spiritual. God said, when you find a thief, the devil is the only one that wants to bring divide in your marriage. The devil is the only one that wants to remove prosperity from your pocketbook, from your wallet, from your bank account. The devil is the only one that wants to remove good health from your body. He's a thief. But God said, when you find the thief, which means what? You got to be able to look around and say, this ain't right. I know I'm supposed to be further than this. I know I'm supposed to have. I know my marriage is supposed to work and run like this. I know there should not be a third party in my marriage. You should be able to see. Now, what is this working? What is this? It's the enemy. So God said, you got to fight through him. God said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through who? Through you? Through me? Of course not. God said, they are mighty through him. He is the weapon. God has given you power and me power over all the power of the enemy. The thing is, you got to know how to use it. The power is the word. The power is your Glock. The power is your shotgun. The power is your sword, the word. God is the weapon. God is the weapon. That's what God said. I will swallow up death in his victory. To swallow something, you got to use your weapon. Your mouth. What's coming from the mouth of God? His word. And God said, no weapon formed against you. No matter what the weapon looked like. He said, it shall not prosper. No fiery dart, right? No arrows. No confusion. No affliction. God said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God said, he shall deliver them out of them what? Out of them all. That means what? Anything that the enemy brings up against you. It will not prosper. It shall not prosper. God has doors for you. God said when he opened up a door, the adversary is going to be there. That's fine. But you got to know just because the adversary is there, it don't mean that you ain't walking through the door. You got to know how to command that adversary to, to flee, to flee, to flee, to flee. God said when you resist the enemy, he shall flee. So now you got to speak God's word. You got to constantly remind yourself of what your father said. He said, no weapon will come to you and prosper. He said, a thousand shall fall by your side and 10,000 at your right hand. And by no means, it ain't going to come now you. He's giving you the power over all the power of the enemy. And by no means shall it harm you. That's what God said. He said, with your eyes, with my eyes, we shall see the reward of the wicked. He said when we are in his habitation, his habitation is, is his word. He said that what? No evil shall befall us and no plague will come down our dwelling. So you ain't got to accept nothing that the enemy is dishing out to you. Even in your dreams, as I tell y'all, when y'all go to sleep at night, when you wake up, you should always say, I rebuke, I renounce, I divorce myself from any contract, covenant, agreement that the enemy tried to forge between me. In him, or try to force between my husband and them, try to force between my children. You listen, you gotta wake up smart. You gotta wake up smart and alert. God said, Be what wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. You gotta know how this serpent moves. If you don't know how this serpent moves, then how in the world are you gonna be able to target him? You can only target, you can only hit the target when you know what the target is. That's why God never misses. And the reason why you missing is because you're not using the proper weapon. Listen, God is your Glock. Which means what? God don't miss. You can, you can shoot with your eyes closed. Listen to me, listen to me. I almost wanna laugh at this thing. If you holding the weapon of God, which is his word, which is God, you got your Glock, the devil, you ain't got to keep your eyes on. See, in, in, the, in, the, in the physical, in the natural, when you hold a gun and you're shooting, you got to go like this. You got to look through the little barrel thing. You got to be all like this, right? You got to be like this, and you got to aim. But with God, when he says, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. Our weapons are mighty through him. Which means what? I choose to use you, God, as my Glock in the spirit realm. 
which means I can shoot with my eyes closed. Shoot, I ain't even got to hold a gun. I, I, I just know, God, that when I speak your word, that you're going to hit this target. You're going to hit this evil target. You're going to shoot it to death between the eyeballs. I ain't even got to hold a sword in my hand. I just got to speak the sword, and it's going to slice the neck. I ain't even got, I can shoot like this. You'll be just like Neo on the Matrix. You'll no longer have to fight looking at the enemy. You'll just be saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You will be right over there like this. And when the enemy sin the dust, you just, they'll drop. Because God said what? He will break the arm and the bow. It ain't your eyes. That needs to be used. It's God's eyes, His ears. It's Him working in you. Isn't that His word in Philippians 2 and 13? For God is the one that does the work in us to will and do for His good pleasure. You know what pleases God? What pleases God is bringing destruction upon the wicked, upon the kingdom of darkness. That, that is what pleases God. That's His work. That's what God said, in, 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 in this earth, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God ain't, ain't God, don't, God don't want you praying. Listen, 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 Linda. God don't want you coming to him praying, asking him for a car, boo. He don't want that. He don't want you coming to him asking him for a house. Why? Because God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then everything will be added. What is God's kingdom? God's kingdom is that he be pleased, Right? He wants to work, the work in you to will and do. And God said, when you are in that place, you got to worry about asking for a car. You got to worry about asking for a house. You ain't got to worry about asking for a husband. You ain't got to worry about asking for a wife. You ain't got to worry about asking for a raise in your job. Shoot, listen, I'm trying to tell you, once you do what God asks you to do, then everything else is going to be added to you. Everything else. That's what we forget to ask God, God, have your way. God, let your sweet smell and savor come into this atmosphere today. Take the stench of the darkness out of here. Let darkness be under your feet. That's how God used us. God is working in and through us when we are speaking his word. But when we are only speaking words what we want to happen, then God ain't doing that on this earth. You just saying, God, you trying you to appease your flesh. God said, get in the spirit of this thing and your flesh will be taken care of. God said, I'm the God of all flesh. Do I not know what to do with it? Do I not know what to do with it? Some of y'all asking God, heal me, heal me, heal me. Start from now on asking God to let his will be done. Asking God, God, remove all sickness, oh God, off the earth, oh God. We bind, we rebuke, we reject sickness, God. And we call for your healing. We call for your stripes to be in the earth today. Your stripes which say that we are healed. We call for your word. Listen, stop worrying about your flesh. Stop worrying about this natural state. God said, you will be taken care of. That's what God told the disciples. Listen, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't even worry about what you're going to say. Why? Because God said, I got this thing covered. I got it covered. You do the spiritual side of this thing, and I'm going to take care of you in the physical it all, it never fails. Every time you're obedient to God, to his will, you are always taken care of. When you decide and listen, I ain't going to worry about this thing. Oh, God, what, what, what you want? God, look on all the children today. God, we ask for protection. God, be the feathers that cover the children today. Instead of you saying, God, give me a car. You, you know how many people are getting kidnapped? Children getting kidnapped? Do you know how much domestic violence is going on? God, we right now, right now bind and rebuke the spirit of, of, of anger, the spirit of abuse. We bind it right now, God. We, we render right now, God, your peace. Let it be released into the earth. Pray like that. Ask God for his will to be done. That's why God, listen, he walks this earth. And when God's walked this earth, darkness is under his feet. We are all members, as God said. We are all members. But a lot of times, we don't see the whole finale of God functioning in the earth because some of the arms are saying, y'all need me some Gucci, God. Bless me with some Gucci. And bless me with some Versace. Ain't that wrong with Gucci and Versace and Louis Vuitton. Okay, ain't that wrong with that. Because, girl, listen, I go. I, listen, I can go and get it if I want. I have some Louis Vuitton today. I do, I do. But listen, instead of trying to 
figure out how you can look good in the physical, what's your wardrobe looking like in the spirit realm? What, what, what is your wardrobe looking like? We going to God for the wrong things at the wrong time. God said, you ain't got to ask for none of that no more. He knows what you want before you can even ask it anyway. You don't think he already knows that what, what your taste is? You don't think he already knows what your heart desire is? God said, when you delight yourself in him, then he'll give you the desires of your heart. So delight in him. Please him. Please him. God said, the earth is his. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. It's God's earth. Right? It's God's world. Everybody in it and on it. Everything. So isn't it fair that God gets what he wants in this earth? The world and all that they that dwell therein? We so busy wanting what we want in this earth, in this world. And we had not yet thought about what's pleasing to God. What does he want since it belongs to him? It's like a house. It's your house. But everybody else asking, can I have these kind of curtains? Can I, can I have this type of sofa? Can I decorate with this kind of stuff? Can I paint it this color? And the person that owned the house, the person who has bought the house, purchased the house, you ain't giving them no say so to do nothing in it. Does that sound fair? It doesn't. So for now on, when you get up, because see, God has already fought for you. He's giving you the victory. You're about to see the reward of the wicked. But make sure you don't forget about God. Make sure you don't forget about him, okay? Make sure you don't forget about it. I had to bring it all back in. But God is fighting for you. He ain't already won. You are a conqueror. And you're about to see this thing manifest. You're about to see it, and it's going to be a blessing to you. Because when the enemy is defeated, that means what? You obtain the victory. That means you have the victory. The enemy is defeated. No escape. They had plenty of warnings. Plenty of warnings. But they would not take you. The enemy would not flee. So God said, since you won't flee devil, I'm about to come in like a thief in the night. And then, sudden destruction. Just when that devil and sat down, got him a plate of food, about to eat just when that devil and got in the bed, got the earmuffs on, and said, I'm going to Netflix and chill. Just when the, you, you get what I'm saying? Just when the enemy feels safe and at peace. God said, He's going to come in like a thief in the night and sudden, without warning, coming out of left field. Destruction shall come upon them and they shall not escape. There will be no help. And you know what that also reminds me? I'm almost at 30 minutes. It reminds me of how God talked about when God told the children of Israel, do not associate yourself with the Canaanite people. God said, because they are so evil and wicked. He said that when they die and whatnot, he said they're not even grieved. There's nobody grieve over them. That's what God brought to me when he began to tell me all this that I'm telling y'all. That when destruction comes, ain't nobody going to be able to grieve for them. Because they got warning after warning after warning. Warning after warning after warning after warning after warning to turn from their wicked ways, but they would not. And God said they put the thorn in the wrong side. They touched his anointing and his prophets, his children. And God said he don't play when it comes to his chosen ones. He don't play. He don't play. And I'm just here ready. I like, God, do I need to get popcorn? Well, God, maybe I don't need to get popcorn because then it'll look like that I'm rejoicing in it. But God said, don't rejoice in the wickedness. Don't rejoice in the wicked demise when God takes it down. God, why? Because God said, when you rejoice and when the wicked is taken down, God said that you, he will remove the punishment. It won't last as long. So I ain't going to get no popcorn. I'm just going to see with my eyes. I'm going to see with my eyes. And I'm going to pray for them. That God have mercy on them. And you do the same. You do the same. And sometimes you don't even know that people being used by the enemy, that they are working against you. Sometimes you don't know. But when God lets you know that something's going on, 
You don't have all the parts because God said we prophesy in part, right? You don't have it all, but God lets you know that something ain't right. Something is going on on the outside. You don't see the whole picture, but God gives you just enough so that you'll be able to begin to war, which means what? You begin to use him as your weapon. And God said, when you do that, he shall answer. Those that call upon me, I will answer them. That's what he said. So listen, God has heard y'all prayers. Because some of y'all have been dealing with a thorn for some years. Some of y'all been having a thorn in your side, in your neck, in your eyes, in your ears. You've been thorned up. But you're just as beautiful as a rose. And you say, you're tired of pricking you. You're tired of the pricks. And God is about to remove every single thorn. He's about to give you, as he said, beauty for ashes. He's about to give you all of joy for your mind. He's about to do that thing for you. And if I get already done, you're just about to come into that thing. We are. And it's going to be some rejoicing. And you got to worry about you being affiliated or you being lumped in on what happened. Because God said he will see us blameless. Why? Because he chose to use him instead of these. Okay? Y'all get it. Got it good. I'm at 30 minutes. If you didn't get this thing, I want to say rewind it. It's a long way. It's up to you. But if you didn't get this thing, rewind it and ask God to give you the discernment. If you don't believe the words that are coming out of my mouth, then go to the mouth of God and he'll reveal to you that the words that came out of my mouth were strictly from his, okay? Because listen, I ain't on here to talk to y'all just because I want to talk to y'all. I ain't that kind of person. I ain't. I only get on here because I want to say what Father says, okay? And I hope you took heed. But like I said, if you didn't get this thing, we want to watch again. But in the meantime, between times, we take just a little bit of what I'm telling you and apply to your life to the best of your ability. You won't ever, 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 ever have to mess with a smile. Why? Because your smiles will always be genuine. Be blessed, say blessed, be blessed, say blessed, be blessed, say blessed, and remember, God is fighting for you. You have won. The enemy is defeated. And there is no escaping God's destruction when his wrath comes in like a thief in the night. Don't feel bad. They were warned. They were warned. Warning comes before destruction. They were warned. Y'all be blessed.